Okay, I've got five o'clock. October 26, 2023. I call this meeting to order. I'll ask Jerry Likens to lead us in a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for being with us today and watch over us that we have a good meeting and help us make all the decisions that we need to make and do a good job of it. In thy name I ask these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jerry. Um, Before you have the minutes of the September 28th meeting, after reviewed, I'll ask for a motion to accept the meeting uh, minutes as read for the September 28th meeting. I'll make a motion. I'll second. First, the uh, tone in. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like so. Motion carries. Also, we have the minutes of the October 5th meeting, which was a special call. Uh, I'll ask for a motion to accept those minutes as read as well. I'll make a motion to accept those minutes. I have a first by Stacia. A second. Second by Jeff. All in favor say aye. Aye. Close like side. Motion carries. Ms. Tara, do you have anything to bring forward? Um, nothing outside of what's on the agenda except I will say that I have reached out to uh, the city regarding some property over near the graveyard. This is separate from the other one that's going to head off and the city. That was in the, this property was the one that was supposed to go for Master Commissioner foreclosure sale. I've looked into the title of that. Um, it's got severe deficiencies. And in fact, I canceled the sale because of it. So it's not anything I would recommend because it's taking action on it this time. Okay. Thank you. What property is that? It's the one with the baby shorts. Probably the baby shorts. And there, there's one that um, Jason on that alley. What, what, what one was that? Over there by the. It runs from Clay to. The some people have been requiring about that alleyway. No, that one. Because there's there's an issue with an alleyway back there that's connected with the Mass Gravel Point property back there. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. There's that one, and the alleyway is not the problem. It's the uh, other street, with I believe getting all the uh, necessary parties to consent. I think there's been a little bit of. And so one I, of them was the Boons, I guess. Yeah, I looked at that. He came in yesterday. I was going to try and follow up today, but uh, I was kind of dead in the water. Okay. Didn't have okay. Long, long, so yeah. So if you can look into that, it'd be great. Um, but it's actually blocked off on this evening. Yeah, it's not open, but it's still on the books. But there's some issues, I believe, some surrounding owners that we have to take care of. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, for you, you have the financial reports, bank statements, income statements, and payable. Uh, after reviewed, I'll ask for a motion to accept the financial reports as read. I make a motion to accept them. Motion by Mary Bell. I second. Second by Stacia. All in favor say aye. Uh, Opposed like sign, motion carries. Okay, and moving on to old business. <coughs> um, 
Who's that? Do you care to read that on station wherever it's at? Okay. Second reading ordinance, fire participation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The back. Huh? Yeah, got it. So back. Oh. <laughs> uh, City of Hartford, Ordinance Number 2023-07, an ordinance establishing participation awards for the City of Hartford Volunteer Fire Department members not to, not to exceed $250 per year. Thank you. And I know that the Chief and the uh, Assistant Chief and them have been working on getting this uh, together for everybody. I think this will be a good thing for what the volunteers do. Um, this will be a roll call vote. I'll start with Jeff. Yes. Station. Yes. yes. Jerry. Yes. Mary Bell. Yes. Tony. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> okay. That's all of old business. Um. In new business, to set the special council meeting for November the 16th. Do I have to do them separately? Uh, I need a motion to ex uh, move the special call meeting to November the 16th. So is this in addition? Yes, is that an additional meeting or because no, of the, the holiday? The holidays. I'll make a motion. Both, both, yes. both of them there. I'll make a motion that we move November meeting to the 16th in lieu of the holiday weekend here. Yeah. I'll second. First and second. By Tony. All in favor say aye. Aye. Well, that's what we huh? Five p.m. Usually. Same time. One. Well, the one in December, I think, is at one, isn't it? Eleven. Eleven. Oh, yeah, you're one. No, you're right. As far as the mill is at eleven, the one is the meeting. Yeah. 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 yeah, in yeah. December. Yeah. yeah. This one's at five. But the one in November is at five. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, same thing for December the eighth. That'll be at one o'clock. No, that's a Friday. That's right. It's, it's a Thursday. Thursday. It's a Thursday. It's usually December Friday. Though. It's a Friday. Oh, we always have them. We always have it on Friday. Okay. Oh, it is. My bad. <laughs> I was listening to Station over here. <laughs> I got my calendar out. My bad. Uh, yeah, it's on a Friday yeah. at one o'clock. So yeah, I'll need a motion to, to make a motion. Okay. Well. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Cole's like sad. Thank you. <clears throat> one o'clock meeting. Eleven o'clock dinner. Yep. And it's all city employees. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Or, or and council. And count. So we're going to make sure that they all know that. They're, I'm sure they'll. Yeah. They. Yeah. Okay. Marissa does a good job taking care of that. So. Um. Okay. Other new new business. I'm going to have Brent come up and tell us what he's got going on. All right. Good afternoon. No. Uh, this year, the Department of Criminal Justice Training has required that all law enforcement agencies submit their sexual assault uh, investigations policy so that they can make sure that everybody is doing bare, uh, the minimum requirements set out. So I submitted what we had in our policy book. It did not meet the minimum requirements. So with that being said, I went to the KLEC website and got their model policy that they had for us, uh, did the changes, and anytime we do a policy change, you guys have to be notified about it and vote on it. So that's basically what I'm bringing for y'all. Anybody want to look at it? So can, can you just tell what what the difference is from what we wasn't meeting? To so what yeah, so our policy book is extremely outdated. Um, I think it hadn't been updated since 2000. Four, I believe. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's it was like a page, page and a half. This goes more in depth on what we are required to offer victims as, okay. as far as um, other resources after said incident had occurred and stuff like that. Okay. Now, do do our officers also take sexual assault awareness training? Yes, we get that in in. Uh, Richmond, a part okay. of our basic training. 
Um, is there they, a requirement that you guys update once a year or something? No, like this it? hasn't been updated since I believe uh, this is the first time I've ever noticed them doing this. And I don't know what the reasoning for it they was. do offer different classes yes. for that. Yeah, yeah. So for is, training, have, for yeah, do we flexible. have a policy or is it? We don't. Our current we don't. They, it's, the police policies have never been updated as long as I've been yeah. training. Yeah. Okay. So you guys get one training going through basic training and then. Any other retraining, whatever the officer, uh, what their area of expertise is, or whatever they want to go okay. into, that's what they do for their in-service training every four years, you know, every year. Okay, so who do we contact if you're called out for a sexual assault harassment case? Who so, we, and you respond. Right. If it's me, if I was to get a call right now that there was a sexual abuse victim at the Ohio County Hospital. I would show up, we would contact what's called a SANE nurse okay. for them to come out and do their their stuff. Um, and depending on the age of the victim, if it's juvenile, we would also get them in contact with the CAC office over in Henderson to have the interview performed. Uh, then we would, uh, if it's an adult, of course, we would let them know what, what resources are available to them as far as... Um, New beginnings. New beginnings, so forth and so on. Okay. <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, Brad, but I do believe that we have uh, sheriff deputies who are specially trained for sexual assault as well. As well as, as, well as we've got, yeah, we've got, KSP, uh, too. Yeah, we've got detectives that, that work sexual abuse crimes. Okay. And also KSP. Okay. All right, but there's no requirement for other than the basic training that you guys get at the academy. So it's not nothing. Okay. So does that need to be in a roll call to accept no, that? No, it's just a motion. Okay. So I, I need a motion to approve the policy of uh, the sexual assault. And there, here's the acceptance letter saying that they reviewed what we However were, you want to work. That this new policy and saying that they would accept it. Is this the first time the council has seen that policy? This one? Yes. But this is the new policy. This is the new policy. Go? We got the. I, I sent it in. They accepted it in September. So this is the first meeting that I. Did so, so I, I'm going to try and piggyback a little bit. I think what Jeff was asking is for this policy to be effective, that they have to send it off to be uh, reviewed and accepted from. Yeah, from they've the already done that. Mm -hmm. Which and that's fine. You all can adopt this. If you're asking our police officers to go above and beyond and have certain training, um, you can go even beyond police. You could ask for you know personnel policies as part of the, the citywide policy to say, hey, we want to have a citywide policy saying that if anybody comes in contact with anyone or, or sexual harassment or things like that, you can adopt those policies and move them in the closing uh, well. do, do we have anything like that in our program or city employees now that they do sexual harassment or anything? I don't think we've had, not, I know the county has, I don't think we've done anything like that in a while. And, and uh, what was that lady's name? Uh, Zell, uh, uh, I don't think she does it anymore, but I don't know who's doing those kind anymore. But that's something that we can set up. I mean, we I don't even think we would have to have it in a policy, but we can put it in a policy, but we can set the trainings up for our employees. It's just an idea. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's as much sexual assault and harassment and things going on in the world mm -hmm. today. Uh, just an idea out there. Uh, I'll look into it and see if maybe I think you could probably help in that category too to find somebody to do training on that. So are we wanting sexual harassment or sexual assault or both? So there's two separate. Just, I would do sexual assault and then. They do have specific, for, if you're looking at, mm -hmm. at something, this is a separate matter from what Brent brought up, uh, you do sexual harassment training in the workplace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I know think, that KLC, it was down all Yeah, the they, they done, uh, I'll let Stacia head that up. That's kind of right up her alley. <laughs> sexual assault. Sexual assault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's into that. <laughs> so, um, moving on, do, uh, do we... Uh, I have a motion to accept this policy. Questions? Well, I, th I think the, if the state's already accepted it, then should it just... Right? Do what? 
since the state's already accepted our policy change, so I guess it's so that it's effective. It was effective in April. No, that's when oh. you. So they gave us a, a specific awesome. deadline that we had to have it in oh. by. Oh, okay. okay. So uh, for us okay. to be in um, good standing with that, because like I said, when we first sent it in, it was in April. They they said X nay, that's not going to work. Okay. So they referred us to the KLEC website. So, but this is whenever I sent it off. And in September okay. last month, they they said yes, this meets the minimum requirements set out for okay. us. So, is it, is it possible, Mayor, for us to table it so we can read it to accept it in our policy? Is anybody that's else up to y'all? Anybody else interested in doing that, or I mean, that's what? Table it to be able to thoroughly read. So it. So we can we can read it to adopt it in our policy, or or if you good. I think if you want to read it, that you should read. But I don't necessarily think that we need to put it in our policy since it's in theirs, and they have the primary responsibility for following through on anything that occurs. And you said the former I policy was one page. page left, that's yeah. So if approved. if this is an agreed, if this if they if you guys say hold off, let's table it. They could say, okay, well, if you're not going to accept this, we're not going to withhold y'all's pledge money from the right. <coughs> so the And that's why it was, so, you know. The prior policy was one page. It was, it was laughable. And this one's the left. Yes, that so, one's more I mean, it's been a... This is that seems, that has a great deal. Minimum state requirements. The minimum state requirements. Yeah. Yeah. It is not necessarily affecting the independent policies that the city may adopt for its employees. Right. But this is to keep them compliant with the state. And you guys, the city has this, like the city over here has their policy book and we have our own next door as well as far as, far as how we operate as a police department. Okay. I'm, I'm in favor of just some of the basic language, the same nurse, the victim's advocacy. I mean, that's all the stuff that I would want included in a policy. I'm okay with proceeding with it. But if anybody else wants to do it. submit theirs. So when we first submitted it, they were like, yeah, this doesn't meet, meet the requirements. Then they directed us to the KLEC website to adopt their model policy, which a lot of agencies do, just so that they know for out of doubt that it meets the minimum requirements, and that's exactly what I So did. was there just an audit, or how did no, we go? No, I don't know how this came about. I, I have okay. no idea, but okay. they required all law enforcement. And we're behind. We need to in trouble right now over this. So there's, there's a lot of, um, yeah, there's a lot of agencies that are so they're cleaning that out. haven't done this yet <laughs> okay. and they're like pressed for time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, I'll ask for a motion. I'll make a motion to the, accept the new <coughs> Hartford Police Second. Sexual Assault Investigation Policy. Investiga policy. I'll second. Second by Mary, first by station. Second by Mary Bell. All in favor say aye. Aye. Close the lights, aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Brett. Thank you. Um, just information November the first, Wednesday, our systems will be down at the office. We're going to try to put something out on Reach Alert, too, to let everybody know that the phone and internet and everything else will be uh, out due to updating our systems and stuff? Oh, yeah, starting tomorrow. Starting tomorrow, I'm sorry. Until the start of the day. Yeah. They got a day early on us, didn't they? So <laughs> Until November 1st. Um, other than that, I think, overall, I think the Oktoberfest was okay for the first time uh, for the city taking it over. I think uh, 
Meredith and Stacia and everybody else done a really good job. I know Tony and uh, Sue came down for Voices of Oakwood to help out. So I uh, thank everybody for helping out on that. We'll grow each year to try to make it good again. So thank you all. Um, Thanks to the city workers. I mean, I delegated pumpkins, but I didn't go pick them up in place. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all so much for, I would text Jason, hey, can we have some pumpkins? Can we have some mums? So thank you all. You all did the work. So um, does anybody in the crowd have anything that they would like to talk about? Actually, um, today it was brought up, I don't know if you all, Station is familiar with ASAP. The ASAP uh, board. It's, it stands for Agency for Substance Abuse Policy, and pretty much every county has one. And we get grant money and all of those stuff to help with substance abuse prevention and whatever. That has nothing to do with it. What was brought up today was you might be familiar with Senate Bill 47. Well. It's the uh, medicinal marijuana bill. And it was brought to our attention from Rebecca Horn, station knows her, she's with the health department, that uh, that bill is set up for counties and then cities to decide how it is they're going to operate. And it's, a, it's an opt-out Plan, meaning if you don't do anything, then it's the wild west. Uh, I think I, I I don't know I don't know all the specifics on because it, it was just brought up. Yeah, it, it's been it's been floated how they were going to do it. Um, I've heard different things, and you probably obviously if you had a meeting today, maybe more. Important. We didn't get real into it, but the way they kind of talked about it, it's a lot like alcohol, where you could you can literally decide they can open at this time, they got to close at this time. You can have it here, have it there. There was even mention of potency, but I, 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 I don't the, know for sure. I, I think the, the basic black and white tenets of your therapy, it's going to happen. Yeah. And it's a matter of the, there are certain restrictions that a city and or a county can adopt, whether or not you want to do it. I think it might be a little bit premature to, to say what those restrictions are at this time because we don't know exactly how this right. is develop. What I did What I did see today was... A county, you can, uh, like, the county can say, we don't want this. But if they decide that they don't want it, they can do that. They can even put it on a ballot if they want to. But if the county says, we're not going to do this, then it actually, now, I was looking at what was called unofficial online. Yeah, well, but, it's, not, it's, not, it's nothing that's... But it's, in the way, the way... What I was reading, the way it was worded, is if the county says we're not going to allow this at all, it drops to the cities, and then the cities can decide how they want to operate. Now but, this is a state bill that's already passed, yes. all right, but no one's done anything. To it's try it's to not. It doesn't start until the end of next year. So we're not. Nobody's. Well, we're no more close though. Right, to. but I, I think what what was discussed at the ASAP meeting today was a situation where it was maybe get with county attorneys regionally so that things don't get out of hand. Put it in perspective, Maribel, and this is what I anticipate. Um, you, may, you may not, but at least I'm sure you appreciate this when we deal with the uh, state ABC. It's a nightmare. No, <laughs> yeah. It's exactly the implementation. Nobody knows what is going on. Right. And as yeah. of right now, this is even more gray area. Yeah, and, it, and it's even... Oh, we, we discussed it today because the... the the craziest part about it is, is that there's not really, you know, like with alcohol, it's like, well, let's just go see what this other county is doing. Well, we can't do that. Right. Now, you can look at what other places, other states did, but it's kind of a situation where you're going to be working from scratch, and the way, and it's going to be medicinal, and it's going to be cards, and you can have some, but it's going to be... It's basically, it's more of a dispensary kind of right. guy you're setting up those businesses. Same way we have liquor stores and things like that. That's, we um, need to take a positive approach on that. Right, and I think where, and correct me if I'm wrong because I haven't been in the meetings in quite a while, but we had this conversation a year or so ago. I think where the Sydney cities can come in is ordinances on marketing and advertising, and we don't I, yeah, want pot leaves on every corner. There, there, there are probably three or four, maybe a half a dozen 
ASAP members that have gone through training. And so what we were what we were potentially thinking now, granted, this was <coughs> four hours ago, <laughs> you know. But what we were thinking potentially was now. to get with the city attorneys the emails, and the county attorney and maybe ASAP host everybody, and because they know they you know they, they've ASAP? had the training. And, and, and that's how we would have to defer to you know, who's ASAP. Say it. it it is. <laughs> Years ago, and I don't even know how long ago it was, that there is an ASAP board in every county. What is ASAP? It is the Agency for Substance Abuse Policy. Oh. It is a grant that was set up with, with the state, and essentially every county gets roughly $20,000 every year, that's what we get, that we use for substance abuse prevention or education, lunch and learn. It used to be what Together We Care. Right. It used to be what Together We Care kind of was, but what we used that money for, uh, we bought canine units for the sheriff's office. We bought bait detectors for the high school, and I think we're doing it for another school. And we've had just educational things. There one year, we had, uh, we literally trained every teacher and every staff member in the school systems on what's called QPR training. Uh, which was uh, mental health, kind of how, how to identify the signs and things like that. That's the things that we do. Work with River Valley. Everybody on this board is, uh, they have to be designated. Like, you have to have someone from the fiscal court or a, like the judge executive board designee. The, the health department's on there. River Valley is on there. You know, station knows the people that are on there. It's a board made up of professionals that deal with substance abuse or Everything. It's, it's, a, it's a very, it, it is a very good committee that we have, and they have done a lot of good. And, and I appreciate them taking such a uh, early yeah, response. This was just something that popped up yeah, today. I, I would say that, and I, oh, hell, I'll even speak for Justin. I know that we would be very interested in being Yeah, because they, they, they're going to be more, yeah, yeah. they're going to be more uh, knowledgeable on it. Than yeah, because they, they, like I said, there's probably four or six that have gone through training that is. Here's what we've got going on. Here's what happened in other states. And I think the, the biggest issue is going to be something this big. It's sometimes it, it's kind of like a situation when, when they made it where Harper could go wet, but you couldn't collect any fees. Right. Like, well, if they, if they left something like that out, you've got to uh, be ahead of the game. The, what's the lady's name? She's from McLean County, I think. Beth Cunningham. Beth. She is our coordinator. She, okay. She, she reached uh, out to me not too long ago. Um, if I can, I will. But if, if I can't, would you set in on those as yeah. much as you can? Because, like I said, and they're going to be more knowledgeable than we are. Even and just be the liaison for right. us to bring and it back to us to make a positive approach on it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, like I said, I didn't have the official wording on it and stuff like that, but I was just looking up as to what the counties and cities had to do. And uh, even that was just more about whether you're for it or against it and didn't even get into the... Are they, are, are they going to assign it over to the state ABC agency? Do you know, or how are they? I have no idea. They told us in our ABC. Is that what they, 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 they are going to assign it to okay. And see, the, the thing that I didn't really know is whether or not you set this up. If, if say something happens and it goes recreational, is it going? Are you going to be set on what you do now, or are you going to have to broaden it, or you know whatever? So, right. uh, it, and knowing, the, especially the way this big opioid grant stuff is going. Sometimes they just figure it out as they go. Yeah, so, I can agree to but that. We were just hoping, and we were hoping to kind of get ahead of the game and not only do something <laughs> locally, coordinate with the county and city attorneys, but then probably get in with Green River and just everybody kind of sort it out because essentially kind of, and this is kind of getting in the weeds, but what you could have is you know, every city be like, no, we don't want this. Every county, we don't want this. And then, then like Harvard would be like, you know what? We'll have a market corner if everybody else does. <laughs> you know, and then, yeah. so, but exactly. sometimes if you don't do it right, it can kind of steamroll mm -hmm. in. And especially some, they're going to be, they're going to be counties that don't do anything. And it could get crazy. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Now, yeah. I don't know when that's going to happen because obviously we're here at the holidays or whatever, but it's something. I think I, I think I do get the emails and I'll forward them to yeah, you if I can't make them. 
But either way, I would like to have you there. No, I appreciate that. All right, thank you. Um, table discussion. Jeff, do you have anything to bring forward for the council? Uh, just uh, information. Uh, a citizen of Hartford has been kind of seeking donations for a handicapped swing to go at Ellis Park. Uh, Kim and Travis Camp have already donated one, but uh, I think it's Tyson Sanford. He's going to be bringing a check to Hartford okay. uh, for a donation. Either they're going to bring it down here or they're going to bring it to me. But anyway, uh, I would like to uh, earmark that for some handicap equipment, swing type thing at Ellis Park. I don't know how much or anything, but uh, I do know uh, I got a call this week saying that they're going to want to help. That's good. I always like the communities. Help. Makes them appreciate it more. So. I'm gonna, and I'll get with you, it can be separate, but I will say I actually just read an article not too long ago about some of those handicapped swings at public places like this outside of school areas where people get on them, like say a wheelchair accessible swing, and if they don't have someone qualified to get them off, it, it can create some issues. So you might just want to follow up with anybody who's providing those things, make sure there's proper training and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, Dylan, and that's why, like, <laughs> it's got to be. Some of them even have to be fenced in for the most part. Um, and that's why we've looked at them. And, and, and the playground rep told me basically the same thing. That's why they deal with them in schools. But um, we'll look into it. And I'll, uh, I guess we can talk to Lawton too and see. I'm a big fan of accessibility, but I just do know that right. sometimes, and, it, sometimes it can create problems that you don't think about. And we'll talk to them about that on the insurance and see where we're at. So, That's all, right. all right, thank you, Jeff. Lisa, do you have anything? No. Stacia? No, I don't have anything. Jerry? No, I don't have anything. Mary Bell? All right. I'll uh, ask for a motion to adjourn this meeting. First by Tony. A second. Second by Station. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Thank y'all.